First Corinthians. No, actually, let's see. Where am I here? I have my notes. Yeah, First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. Um, last week I forgot the notes, so I've I've got on the outside of your piece of paper there. You've got the first page and the last page are the notes. On the inside are some extra bits that we may or may not discuss to just for you to for you to take home. But um, last week we were, we were looking at the subject of temperance there in the fruit of the spirit, the last one. It's often called self-control. It comes from the Greek word that means, means strength. And it uh, has to do with uh, containing, you know, having the strength to, to contain. And uh, we said last week, sometimes our, our lives are a bit like bags with holes in them, you know, or things are coming out that shouldn't be coming out, and things are coming in that shouldn't be coming in, and so on. Um, the, with the notes there, um, the words that you're looking for, it sometimes involves sins, Sometimes it involves privileges. Uh, you know, sometimes we have to be careful of things, even though they're good and right to do, they might not be good and right for us to do them at this present time or in this situation we're in. Um, and we have to ask the Lord to help us to know the difference between uh, what we should do and what we could do. Sin and privileges. And then so we said that Paul, you know, he had the, the right to take a salary, but he didn't. He, he sacrificed that privilege. He showed temperance uh, to make the gospel free is the one word, uh, to win as many as possible, to gain a lasting reward. He, he said he wanted to be all things to all men. He didn't want them to have a prejudice uh, that uh, could make it hard for him to share the gospel with them. Free, win, reward. And then we looked at some illustrations, the illustration, the illustration, Illustration of the athlete, and then we're going to look at that again tonight. Uh, we saw Joseph there in the Old Testament, Genesis 39, how that he um, showed temperance when uh, temptation came. Daniel, uh, purpose not to defile himself in Daniel chapter 1 there. And, and then, of course, Jesus, when he was tempted, used scriptures and uh, did not, of course, give in to temptation. So we were looking at the practice of temptation and, and the a lot of examples. Tonight we're looking at the process. Did I say temptation? Temperance. <laughs> the process of, of temperance tonight there in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Now this is one of the portions we read last week as well. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 26. Just right there at the end of the chapter. Uh, verse 25 he said, Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I've preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Uh, people uh, think that Paul probably liked athletics and was familiar with them, because he uses the illustrations every once in a while. And uh, it's a very good one here as you, as you look at this thing of, of temperance. Um, especially in our day and age, and maybe probably the same then, uh, athletes have a goal in mind and a way they're going to reach it. You know, if they're the boxer or the wrestler or the runner or whatever, they want to be the best. And it, it's not just the competing. Uh, it's winning that, uh, you know, athletes want. Uh, so they have a goal in mind, and they, they have worked out, most of them, a way, well, here, here I want to be the best whatever. Uh, I've got to do this and this and this. And man, they, athletes now, they do a lot of things, don't they? Sometimes they even cheat, but that's, that's not what he's talking about. Uh, you know, how, what they eat, how they sleep, uh, you know, just a, a lot of various things. And he's comparing that to the Christian life. In the Christian life, we need to be temperate. Uh, our strength needs to be under God's control. We need to be contained. God needs, we need to let God limit us in the things that we do. A practical way to look at that is something that uh, we sometimes call the believer's cross. It, it, you probably have seen a picture of that where Jesus is the center, and then you've got a cross around it, and you've got, of course, prayer is you know, up, and the Bible is down. We speak to God. God speaks to us. Well, that's a real practical way uh, to, uh, to let the Lord teach you and show you what he wants you to do. It's real basic, isn't it? You pray. You, you read your Bible. The side arms 
have to do with church and uh, our witness or our testimony. And uh, those are very practical. You know, be in church, you know, hear the messages, get the fellowship, uh, get the hassle sometimes so you can, you know, adjust yourself to other Christians, uh, witness to people. Listen, it'll really cause you to grow if you'll witness. People will ask you questions that you won't know the answer. <laughs> and uh, you'll have to, you know, search the scriptures. So just on a practical level, that's, that's a good way to look at it. But tonight we're going to go to 2 Peter chapter 1 and just look at some things that the Lord gives us here in a, a few, few verses in chapter 1. Eight things, in fact. I think God gives us a pattern here for, for the Christian life. And he gives it in a bit of a progression. Now, we need to be careful with that because it's not like, okay, I finished this one, I'll start the next one. <laughs> and, you know, I have all virtue now, so now I'll get all knowledge. Uh, if you've been a Christian very long, you know it, it doesn't work that way. But, but there is a progression in that uh, there are things that we're not going to know until we've learned something else. We've gone through something else. Um, so in, in learning temperance, um, the, the pattern for our Christian life, you know, what is our goal as Christians? What, what, are we, what are we trying to accomplish? That's a pretty general question. We want to be like Jesus. Now, there's the goal. We want to be like Jesus. So let, let's read starting in 2 Peter 1 verse 5. He says, besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity or love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he starts with faith. That's the first one. Faith. Uh, to, to grow in the Lord, first of all, you have to be in the Lord. Salvation. Jesus said, you, you must be born again. We're saved by faith, the Bible says. But faith also has to do with the fact that we believe something. We need to have a firm persuasion that God's word is true. We need to have faith. Uh, we live by faith. Uh, as Christians, we need to be committed to believe and to obey the Bible. In Jude, he says, we're to contend for the faith. It's even worth disagreeing with somebody, you know, to say, no, I believe this. Uh, faith is the start. And uh, one of the reasons I see this as a progression is because you, you can't start anywhere else. You know, there's, there's plenty of religion around, and there's religions that teach knowledge and they teach virtue, but without faith, it's distorted. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. The second one he talks about is virtue. Virtue, add to your faith Virtue. I've been talking to Rivo about using these as kind of a basis for talking to the kids. Um, faith, virtue, and knowledge. Those first three, well, then temperance, we can go on to all of them, but uh, those first three uh, are some really important subjects, aren't they? Faith, virtue has to do with our character. I've always found it interesting that he has that second. A lot of times I think as Christians we, we tend to jump to the third one. You know, somebody gets saved, we want to pump them full of knowledge, you know. Uh, the Bible says the, the second thing is virtue. Now, you, you can think about it. I've been thinking about it a lot, and there's still a lot of things I, I don't understand. But he's just talking about excellence of life, uh, character. It also has to do with courage, virtue. Uh, how can we add virtue? Yeah, that, that thought's been going, going through my mind uh, today. You know, as Christians, adding virtue, add to your faith virtue. Well, I guess it just means when you got a choice, do right. <laughs> I mean, really, there's a lot of things we, you could think about. Maybe you, this might be a good thing to meditate on sometime. Uh, all the things we think of as virtues. Well, God says those should, if they're real virtues, they should characterize us. You know, we should be honest. Man, Christians should be honest. You know, if we can't tell the truth, we should at least not say anything. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's sometimes when you don't don't have to say everything, but, uh, you know, we should be virtuous. Uh, you know, when a job needs doing, we should do it. Uh, when we buy something, we should pay for it. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, there's all kinds of areas there. Add to your faith virtue. And I think part of the problem is when we skip this step, I've heard it said we get 
educated beyond our obedience? If you just go to knowledge, well, it's, it's not enough just to know what the Bible says. We need to be obeying it. And that's why I was saying this is not just you do one and then, okay, I'm done with that one. I'll do the next one. We're working on them all at the same time. But there is a, a progression to it. We had to our faith virtue. And as we're willing to obey the Lord, then it's going to make a difference when we read his word. And if you read the Bible and you're not willing to obey it, it's not going to change your life. <laughs> um, I guess it might be like putting something together and reading the instructions and still not doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brother here says after. We read the directions after, you know. <laughs> That's typical man, man talk. Uh, but as, as Christians, we had to our faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. We do need to know. Um, now, when you add virtue... As you're adding virtue, what question might come up? You know, the Bible says, you need to live like this. What, what question might come up? It's one of the questions that reporters ask. How do you feel about this? No? Why? Oh. Now, how would be a good one, too. But, you know, that's, so the, the why and the how, knowledge would help us to understand, wouldn't it? Maybe some of the other ones. Not how do you feel about that. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, we, we were always taught, you know, as a reporter, you ask who, what, where, when, something, all those things. Uh, so add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Uh, there's a verse, 2 Peter 3.18, just the, the last verse of the book. He says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and ever. God wants us to know the, the truth. God wants us to know him. <clears throat> this course we're going to be doing on Wednesday nights, one of the things it works real hard at is knowing the character of God. And that'll help us. When we know the character of God, uh, our faith will be much stronger and we'll, we'll be uh, more equipped to do the things that a Christian should do. Um, let me just read you a couple of verses from Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is all about the Bible. Famous verse, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. We, we add to our virtue knowledge. We understand God's word. Uh, later on, verse 89, he says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Yeah, it's, it's complete. Uh, verse 97 says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Uh, we need to be thinking about God's word. Another very well-known one, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yeah, it, it'll show us where to go. One of my favorites is Psalm 119, verse 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. God can help us to know. And then it brings us to our, our topic. Add to your knowledge temperance. In looking at it, this is just my opinion, but I feel like temperance is the tipping point. You're kind of working your way uphill, and then you get to temperance, and man, when you get that, then it's kind of downhill from there. Now, you can disagree with me on that. But once, once you get to temperance, you added to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance, well then it's, it's, not that, it's not as hard then to add patience and godliness and brotherly kindness and love. The reason I think many Christians never get to godliness and brotherly kindness and love is because they've never worked their way up to temperance. <laughs> you know, they, they're just, there's a lot of Christians that are well, the Bible talks about babes in Christ, or some of them use the word carnal. Uh, you know, just never, never bothered to add the virtue and the knowledge and the temperance and so on. But if we'll do that, if we'll grow in the Lord, like he says at the end of Peter there, grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, it'll make all the difference in our Christian life. And we've been talking about tem temperance. It's limiting our passions and desires. Pretty much the opposite of what the world teaches. <laughs> If you want it, you get it. You know, if, your heart, if you put your heart in it, you can do it. Uh, the Bible says the heart's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And as, as Christians, we want to practice temperance. We want the Lord to contain us. Oh, don't burst out there. No, keep in there. Uh, temperance. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, If you have temperance, for instance, without knowledge, I've known people like that, where they'll limit themselves in an unscriptural way. Um, we knew of one man who, who left his family, his wife and children, uh, you know, to serve the Lord. 
well, well that wasn't right. You know, that, he, he should have limited himself, but he limited himself from his family in, a, you know, in an ungodly way. Uh, we, add, we add to those things. If you were to add temperance without virtue, I was trying to think of an illustration of that. Um, I guess there's, there's things that you could, you could do in, in that light. But particularly, I see people who have, they try to practice temperance without faith. And we call that religion. They do, boy, some strange things sometimes. And it's, it's not what the Lord wants at all because they haven't started in the right place. First we give our heart to the Lord and then we begin to add virtue and knowledge and, and temperance will flow from, from God's word. There's a couple of verses I wanted to read there in Proverbs 25. You, you can probably go right through Proverbs and see a lot of verses about temperance. But Proverbs 25, 16, Hast thou found honey? Eat as much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. <laughs> That's temperance, isn't it? He said, it's a good thing, but don't eat too much. Uh, the next verse, a different kind of temperance. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee. <laughs> sometimes we have, you know, we love going to so-and-so's house, you know. Well, sometimes we've got to limit ourselves. Oh, I won't go there today. Uh, one more, verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Our spirit needs to be contained. The Lord needs to put limits and, and so on. So you can see, uh, we, we keep adding in our Christian life. And he says, then that leads to, we add to temperance, patience. Patience is actively enduring with proper inner responses. <laughs> we add that last bit because, you know, you can endure and be really wrong in your heart. <laughs> We've all done it, definitely. Uh, you know, waiting for our wife or waiting for our husband or you know, whatever. Uh, patience, actively enduring with proper inner responses. And then he says, add to patience godliness. That's changing our value system to concentrate on things of eternal worth. And like I was saying, I, I think, you know, my theory is that once you get to temperance, these other things will, will come a little more, um, I won't say naturally, spiritually, um, as we are growing in the Christian life. And then brotherly kindness. Uh, love of the brethren. Yeah, like I was saying, a, a lot of Christians never get to that point because they've never added the virtue and the, and the knowledge and the temperance and so on. And then, of course, the last one is, is love. In the diagrams that I've given you there, they're from another source. Uh, they start at the bottom with faith. You, you know, that's the seed. And then growing up in love is, is at the top. And some, some good uh, points there that I thought you might like to have uh, for your notes. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us. That word constrain means holds us together. It's, it's the glue that, that holds us together as, as Christians. Um, it's interesting there in, um, in 2 Peter chapter 1, it, he had said in verse 5, besides this, giving all diligence. And then he, he starts the list, you know. And, and diligence is when we're not just doing something haphazardly, we're really concentrating on it. And these are important parts of the Christian life, is what he's saying, with, with all diligence. The thing I was going to say is in, in verse 10, he brings that up again. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. And then he talks about a, an abundant entrance into, into heaven. Uh, we need to be diligent. Uh, we need to make sure we've started with faith. Faith in Christ, faith in the gospel. And uh, like I said, these aren't just dealt with one at a time. Um, there, there is a progression, but we, we deal with them all at once. One other point there from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I, I think you see it there in your notes. 1 Corinthians 9. He, he talks about the, the penalty or the problem when temperance is ignored. We've probably all known people whose lives were out of control. And, you, you know, physically and and. Uh, in life, we, we see the results, but he talks about it here in 1 Corinthians 9, the end of verse 27. I'll read the whole verse. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Uh, the penalty is that when temperance is ignored, uh, we can become a castaway. Now that, that word uh, simply means disapproved. It, it's 
Six times in the Bible, it's translated reprobate. Yeah, that's, that's a word you don't want used about you. Uh, and one time, it's, it's translated rejected. So that, that's the idea of it, cast away. A sad example of this in the Bible, strangely enough, is Moses. It, it, to me, it's just so strange. He's such a godly man of faith. And yet, if you know the Bible, you know, God told him to speak to the rock, and he got angry, and he hit the rock. And because of his intemperance, because he didn't contain himself as the Lord had told him, you know, he led them to the promised land. He saw the promised land, but he wasn't allowed to go in. And uh, you know, that's, that's a, a pretty good example of what he's talking about. If, if we don't um, let the Holy Spirit have this fruit in our life, it can limit us. It can cause us to be uh, disapproved. Now, it would be pretty hard for a Christian to reach a point where they couldn't do anything, but uh, there are, are areas of ministry where um, because of, of past action, uh, for instance, a, a person who's been divorced can't become a pastor, you know, that kind of thing. There's, there's just things where uh, it limits us. And uh, we need to, to take very seriously this thing of, of temperance. It's not talking about loss of salvation. It's just, it is talking about loss of service or reward. So temperance, based on knowledge and verse, virtue, uh, is a real important part of, of our life. One of the things I regularly try to say is not all opportunities are from the Lord. Just because you have an opportunity doesn't necessarily mean it's from the Lord. And you take that home and think about it because it, it's true. Oh, pastor, I've got this great job I can do. I've got to work on Sundays, but boy, it's a good job. Well, let me, I can tell you, it's not from the Lord. Uh, oh, I'm dating this wonderful woman. She's only been married three times, but she's a wonderful woman. Well, i uh, got to be careful of the illustrations I use, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just saying that there's just some, some areas where we need to let the Lord lead us and guide us. God will give us opportunities, but there'll come other opportunities where, like Paul, he had to say, no, I won't, I won't do that so that uh, the gospel can be free and I can win others and, and uh, have the rewards. The Holy Spirit will help us. That's the key in all of this. I, I'm probably going to talk about that uh, next week, but uh, he wants this fruit in our life. It's his fruit. He, he's, he's working at it, and it starts with faith. That's an important What's, what's a word that has to do with something that is all important? Um, crucial, that is the word. That's crucial. It's got to start with faith. All right. Uh, any comments or questions?